Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome to the final week and stretch of June. So today is the 30th, last day of the month. Um, so I thought for today um, I would do one of my traditional flows. So it'll be um, it'll be an active one with some still movements within as that's my favorite flow to go to. Um, grab any props that you might need if, if you haven't if you haven't guessed by now, I love balances, so there'll probably be a fair share of balances. If you need the blocks, feel free to have them or any other props that you might need. Do your best to take care of yourself as we go through this practice. Uh, modify as you need, intensify as you'd like. This is the way that I always teach my classes, so today is no different. Uh, I will give options as we go through. So, I think with that said, let's get to it, shall we? Find a comfortable seated position on your mat. All right. Oh, sitting up nice and tall through the spine, hands resting on the legs, palms down, palms up, or in your lap. Whatever makes you feel the best. Let your eyes close and start to focus in on your breath. As you start to settle into your rhythm of breath, let's take a nice body scan this morning. So starting with the top of the head, the crown of the head. Send your breath up to that area and as you exhale, release any tension that you may be holding. On the crown area, it's mostly thoughts, worries, anything that doesn't serve you positively at this moment. Do your best to exhale and let it go. And moving down to the face, the jaw, making sure that you're nice and relaxed. Inhale to that area, and then exhale, release any tension. Moving down to the throat and the neck, breathing into that area. And as you exhale, let it go. Make sure that the throat is nice and open for the breath, the neck is relaxed. If you need to give slight movement here for the physical aspect, feel free to do so. And exhale, let it go. Moving down to the shoulders, the upper chest, and the upper back. Breathe into that area, and as you exhale, let go of extra tension. Shifting our awareness now down through the arms shoulders, the arms, the elbows, the wrists, the hands and the fingers, that whole piece of the body. Breathe air into it and then exhale, let go of any extra tension. the awareness come back now to the torso, to your heart area, the chest, the armpits, the middle back, all around the ribcage. Nice full breath into the ribs and lungs. And then exhale, let it all go. Moving 
down into the waistline, the lower back, the belly. Breathe into it. And then exhale, let it all go. Let that tension flow out. Shifting down to now the hips, the hip flexors, <clears throat> the glutes, the pelvis in general. Our core, our powerhouse, that whole area. Take a nice deep breath into it. And then exhale, let it all go. Let all that extra tension go. Any gripping, any stiffness. Moving down now through the legs, the inner thighs, the hamstrings, the quads, the IT band, basically the whole upper leg. Breathe into it. And then exhale, let go of any tension. And shift your awareness down below the knee your calf muscle, the shin, all the way down to the ankles. Breathe into the shin and the calf. And then exhale, let it all go. Bring your awareness now down to the heels, the ankles, the tops of the feet, the arches of the feet ball of the foot, the toe and knuckles, and the toes themselves. Nice big breath into those feet. Exhale, release any tension from that area. Then allow your awareness to cover the entire body as one piece. Send your breath to every nook and cranny, every fingertip, every toe tip, the crown of your head, each muscle, every bone. And then exhale, let it go, let that tension go. Just stay here for br and breathe for a few more moments, feeling the wholeness of the body. let your breath start to deepen. <laughs> it wouldn't be wake and stretch without an event from the dogs. <clears throat> All right, so <laughs> from here, let's find our way onto hands and knees. Here they come. Once you're in that tabletop position, let's move through a few cows and cats. On your inhale, lifting the head and chest. Exhale, curl into cow. Inhale, lifting into cow. Exhale, curl into cow. Take a few more rounds of breath here on your own time, your own breath pattern. next uh, round of breath, bring yourself back to neutral and find your way to child's pose. <laughs> I'm telling you, these dogs <laughs> goes right into my hands. So 
from here from your child's pose, either stay there a little longer or find your downward facing dog. Whatever you're ready for. Feel free to pedal through the seat if you'd like, or just stay in stillness in your down dog if you've chosen to go there. And we'll roll forward uh, into plank a few times. So if you're in child's pose, you can shift back and forth between child's pose and plank. Or you can go down dog to plank. As you inhale, you want to come forward to your plank. As you exhale, you press back either to child's pose or downward facing. Moving through a few times on your own breath pattern. On your next inhale, stay in your plank. Exhale, of course, where you need to, and then find your side plank. Rolling on to the inner and outer edges of the feet. So they're not stacked. They're still right underneath your hips. Top arm floats up. And as you exhale, bring it back to regular plank. You can do this on your forearms as well. And switch to the other side. Come back to your regular plank. Take a nice inhale here. We'll take our vinyasa. Exhale, lowering down. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or up dog. Exhale, down dog or child's pose, your choice. Staying for a few breaths. If you're in child's pose and you're ready to move to downward facing dog, <laughs> feel free to do so. And inhale, lift the head. Exhale, walk it forward. Finding your Ardha Uttanasana, lifting halfway. As you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands come to the heart. One full breath here with the arms. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, hands come to the heart. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, dive it forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. We'll go through a sun salutation. Exhale, hands to the mat, step a foot back to plank. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog or child's pose. Stay for a few breaths. On your next inhale, lift the eyes, step or hop the feet to the top of the mat, lift your spine halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands come to the heart. One full breath here with the arms. Let's move through that same thing again. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, diving forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold hands down, step or float back to plank. Move through your vinyasa, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog or child's pose. On your next inhale, lift the eyes, step or hop the feet to the top of the mat, lift the spine halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands come to the heart. One full breath here. <coughs> inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, dive it forward, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold hands down, step or float back to plank, move through, knees, chest, chin, or chat under. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now we'll start to play a little bit more, now it'll get warmer. Inhale, the right leg up and back, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, give it a twist. Inhale, straighten the legs, square off the hips. Exhale, thigh to the chest, step it through, falling star. Bring it back, three-legged dog, square hip. Exhale, step it through, find warrior one. Back heel rotates down and in. Inhale as you rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart, start to collect the front body, meaning the ribs and the belly, lift up and in. <coughs> Arms can be up or at the heart. <coughs> From here, bring the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, roll the shoulders back, inhale, lift the heart, exhale, humble warrior. Inhale, lifting yourself halfway up. Exhale where you need. Release the arms and find lightning pose. From here, finding warrior three. Shifting your weight forward onto that right foot, letting the back leg float behind you. <laughs> and stepping about halfway back on your mat. Preparing for pars votanasana. So you have about a meter or a yard of space between the heels. Hands come behind, hold on to your wrists, forearms, or reverse prayer. Roll the shoulders back, lift the heart. Exhale, tuck the chin and hold it forward. On your inhale, come all the way up to vertical. Exhale, hands to the heart, shift it forward, lift that thigh up towards the chest, outwardly rotate, and find your tree pose. Here, cross the ankle over the thigh, find cross-legged chair. Now, if you'd like a little extra challenge here, I'm actually gonna move back a little bit so that I have mat space. You can take flying pigeon if you'd like, or the steps in between. I go over this in my in the last pre-recorded video I released, 25 minutes for concentration. But if you don't know this pose, you just stay in the cross-legged chair. Staying for a few more breaths. If you're in the balance, then gently come out. On an inhale, let the arms extend up overhead. Exhale, release the foot down to the mat. Fold it forward, taking your uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold hands down to the mat. Find your way back to plank. And vinyasa. Knees, <laughs> chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. No, you can't be in the middle Moving on to the other side, inhale the left leg up and back, three legged dog. Exhale, bend that knee, give it a nice rotation. Twisted three legged dog. Go ahead and straighten that leg, square off the hips, exhale, side of the chest, falling star. Gently bring it back. 
three-legged dog. Step it through. Warrior one. Inhaling as you rise. Exhale, hands can stay up or you can bring it to your heart. Start to lace the front body together. And gently bring the hands behind the back. Interlace the fingers opposite thumb on top. Shoulders roll back. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, humble warrior. Inhale, lifting the head, neck, and shoulders. Bring yourself halfway up. Exhale, release the hands. Lightning pose. From lightning pose, shifting forward, finding warrior three. Then from here, step it back about halfway. Preparing for parzo tanasana. <coughs> Excuse me, hands come back. Behind, hold on to your wrist forearms or reverse prayer. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, tuck the chin and fold it forward. Now on your inhale, lift the head, neck, and shoulders come all the way up to vertical. Exhale where you need to, shift it forward. Lift that thigh up to the chest, the right thigh that is. Outwardly rotate, find your tree pose. Find your breath, find your calmness here in your tree. You have an option you can stay here you can take cross-legged chair and you can breathe and stay here or if you prefer you can start working into flying pigeon so the next step would be to fold it forward bring the elbow around the foot and the shin bone use your German Shepherd so that you don't fall over or you can go into the flying pigeon if you'd like. Let's see if I can do it around you so he'll let me. Now he's fully on my foot. Let's see if I can get into it. Don't bite my toes. Nope. <laughs> well, you don't know till you try. All right, then from here, bring yourself back up to vertical, inhaling as you do. Exhale the foot <clears throat> back down to, <laughs> to the mat. Oh, I love these dogs, but man, they really hug my, my space. Inhale, the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold it forward. Forget it, I'll let them have the mat. I'm gonna move, move it over. Take your vinyasa. <laughs> Stay here in your down dog or take child's pose. Whichever option you'd like. Look at these two. They're too cute. I can't, I can't push them off the mat. I just can't do it. <laughs> All right. So from here, let's find our way back to downward facing door. Inhale, lift the eyes, step or float to the top of your mat. Lifting halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands come to the One full breath here with the arms. Coming into chair pose from here, so either legs parallel underneath the hips or bring the inner edges together up to you. Inhale to chair. Exhale, hands to the heart, weight shifts to the heels. Inhale, extend the arms. Exhale, hands come to the heart, then twist to your right. Either hands to the outer hip or thigh or keep prayer hands and tuck the elbow around up to you. Be mindful that the knees stay side by side. If they're not, then adjust your hips usually means that the right hip has shifted back. But from here, stay in the twist, 
Shift your weight into the right foot, release the left heel, tap it back, find your high lunge twist, or twist and high lunge, however you'd like to say it. And from here, let the eyes focus down towards the front foot. Stay in the twist, release the arms, let's find half moon balance, twisted half moon that is. If you want a little extra, bend the back foot, see if you can connect the hand and the foot. It's there somewhere. Then from here, release the hand and the foot, come to standing split, squaring off, letting the torso fold if that's comfy for you. Then inhale, lift the torso, only about halfway, just so that you're now expressing outward and open up into real half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Opening the hips, opening the shoulders. If it's good for you, the top arm can extend. And soften that standing knee, reach the toes back for warrior two. And exhale, settle into your warrior two. Inhale, rotate the front palm. Exhale, reach it up and back, reverse warrior. Staying for a few breaths. Inhaling up through center, straighten the leg. Exhale, triangle pose. Let the top arm come to your waist, eyes down towards the mat, bend the knee, extended side angle. And then let's find our way back to a high lunge, hands down onto the mat. Gentle baby shifts forward and back. If this hurts your knee for any reason, don't shift the weight, just stay in the high lunge. Then press through the hands, lift the hips just a little bit higher, squeeze the right heel to your sit bone, then step it back, vinyasa down dog or child's pose. Staying for about two more breaths. From here, find your way to the top of the mat. Ardha Uttanasana, lifting halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Exhale, hands come to the heart. <clears throat> nice big breath here. Good. Coming into chair pose. On your inhale, bend the knees, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Shift your weight back to the heels. Belly scoops up. Inhale, extend the arms. Exhale, hands to the heart, twist to the left. Whichever connection makes more sense to you on this side, hands or elbow. From here, shift your weight over into the left foot. Release the right heel, start to tap it back. Stay in the twist and find your high lunge twist. From here, eyes down towards the mat, your front foot. Release the hands out, twisted half moon. Then allow the hands to come down to the mat, standing split. Inhale, lift the torso about halfway up. Start to radiate outward with your heart. And find Ardha Chandrasana, half moon, opening the hips and the shoulder. Finding energy through all four limbs. Find your breath. Start to soften the standing knee, reach the right toes back. 
find your warrior two. Settling in. <sighs> Inhale, rotate the left palm. Exhale, reach it up and back. Reverse warrior. Inhaling up through center. Exhale, triangle pose. Let that top arm come to your waist, eyes down to the front foot, bend to the left knee, find extended side angle. And gently bring your hands back down to the mat inside of the front foot, flip the back heel up, find your high lunge. You can take little tiny shifts forward and back if that's uncomfortable on your knees, then just stay still and breathe into those hips. Find your stillness, press into the hands, lift the hips a little bit higher, start to squeeze that left heel to the sit bone, step it back, the plank, and vinyasa. Down dog or child pose. I think I'm feeling one more arm balance today. This must be a kooky day because I don't really do arm balances as you guys know. <laughs> I'm feeling the strength today, so I'm going for it. Um, so find your down dog. Inhale the right leg up and back. Exhale, step it to the outside of that front foot. You can go into low lunge here if you'd like to to get into this. We're going to go into, let's see if I can get the Sanskrit out. Ika, Pada, Kundanyasana, two. Three, one, one of them. <laughs> um, so how we get into this, regardless of the name, is you tuck your shoulder underneath the knee. So that you have a little bit of support there, right? <sighs> then from here, you slide it out so that your knee is as close to the armpit and shoulder as possible. Bend the other arm. I like to bring the elbow to the hip. It's not happening this morning, is it? There it is. And then let the back leg float up. When you're done, either watch your face, step it back, down dog, vinyasa child's pose, or just enjoy the laugh <laughs> if you fell out of it. It's all good. All right, let's try the other side. Left leg up and back. Exhale, step it forward. You can lower down the back knee here for low lunge. Start by tucking the shoulder underneath. All right, so now that I have that connection, I'm gonna slide the foot out and around. Elbow to the hip. Keep the head up. Ooh. All right. And then when you're done, find your way back. Vinyasa if you'd like, down dog or child's pose. It's always fun to try these arm balances every once in a while. Doesn't mean you're gonna nail it. Doesn't mean it's gonna always feel good, but it's fun to try, right? We need to, challenges are fun. Okay, so from here, find your down dog, <clears throat> step it forward, have a seat. Let's come to a bound angle pose. So sitting up nice and tall. As you exhale, open those elbows and start to hinge forward. So you're just trying to keep the spine nice and long here. Inhale, start to bring it up. We'll take one more, but this time with a curved spine. As you exhale, chin to the chest, let the pelvis tilt. 
Imagine the crown of your head coming to the middle of your feet. And breathe. Inhale, rolling up through the spine. Exhale, gently close the legs. Give a little rock from side to side. The dogs may go ballistic in like a minute. Maybe, maybe not. I foresee the future. From here, right heel into the sit bone, left leg extends, we'll take a seated spinal twist. Right hand behind, inhale the left arm up. As you exhale, twist around to the right. You'll bring it back to your center. Exhale, release the leg out. Let's twist to the other side. Left heel in, right leg straight. Inhale, the right arm up, and then exhale, twist and hug it around. On your inhale, bring it back to your center. Exhale, gently release, let the legs come out. Give a little rock, shake a little rock and pop with the legs. We did so much work standing up. I'm pooped now, how about you? <laughs> um, I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is mm, relax back onto um, some props. So it's okay if you don't have a bolster. If you wanna just lay flat for this next one, you're welcome to. I'm going to come into reclined butterfly. So bringing your props right up against your pelvis, just so that your lower back has support as you lie back. If you want or need more support under the head, bring something underneath it. Arms can come out to the side, or if you don't want so much of a chest opener, you can bring the arms somewhere else on the thighs, on your belly, wherever you'd like. If it's too intense on the inner thighs, then bring the feet wide and let the knees knock together. Always an option. Stay here for just a few more breaths. And let your hands come down to your legs if they're in butterfly. And use your hands to bring the legs to a nice parallel position. If your knees are knocked together, just bring them now so they're uh, nice neutral underneath underneath your hip. <clears throat> Gently roll to one side. Come up to a seated position. And let's see, what are we feeling from here? I have an idea. All right, so you can either move your props or you can move your body either way. Um, instead of laying flat, we're going to get a bit of a back bend, but on on the props it's a little bit more passive um, it's a little bit deeper into the chest and the throat so you want to move so that your bolster is right where the shoulder blades are then from there allowing the head to rest back now this opens up the throat if it's too intense for you no problem 
bring extra bring extra support under the head so that you don't have to stretch so much because sometimes this is irritating to um, the blood flow to the neck and we don't want discomfort right or I should say we don't want pain no pain is no bueno so go where it's comfy you can let the arms float overhead if you'd like out to the side or you can keep them down by your thighs and organize your legs any way you'd like. This is more about the upper chest and your throat. And this body position itself is an expression of openness and receptivity. Ooh, big words this morning. Being receptive, letting yourself be open for expression, for listening, for whatever it is that you may need throughout the day. This opens up the throat chakra, which is important for communication, for being heard. And breathing in and enjoying the airflow as it comes in and out through the throat. a few more breaths here. If you've chosen to let the hands float overhead, bring them down towards your chest first. And it's important not to move too quickly out of this pose as the head is in a compromised position. So depending on how you are, you can use your hands on the back of your head and you can lift the head that way. You can also roll onto one side and support the head as you do with your hands, whatever you need. And let's come into our Shavasana from here. So you can either lay flat or if you'd like to prop again, feel free to. I think I'm going to stay on my props today. Let your legs go where they're comfy. Arms a little bit lower than the shoulders, palms up. Eyes closed and take rest. If you'd like to stay in your Shavasana a little longer, feel free to do so. If you're ready to come out, start to deepen your breath. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, these dogs. These dogs today, I tell you what, 
find energy in your fingers, toes, wrists, ankles, hands, feet. And give a nice long stretch through the body. Then gently hug the knees in towards your chest. Give a little rock from side to side. And roll on to your right side fetal position. And gently press yourself up to a seated position. Eyes closed and your hands pressed at your heart. In prayer, one on your heart, one on your belly, or petting your animal, <laughs> whatever it is that's there for you, that brings you peace and calmness. Check in with how you feel after that practice. And as always, give a few moments of gratitude, something that you're thankful for this morning. <laughs> Doggy love. <clears throat> so one thing that I am grateful for, as I know that I say I'm grateful for you for showing up, but in these three months of doing the wake and stretch with maybe one day off, I appreciate uh, how hard it is to get up every morning and, and do this, um, to get up and take care of yourself. It's so much easier sometimes to take care of other people. So <clears throat> I, I did this in hopes of connecting for one in a time where we had to be separated physically. Um, that was back in April, right? <clears throat> and to, to help each other show up for ourselves, if that makes any sense. Um, anyway, uh, let me say this. <laughs> Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste, my friends. I am truly grateful to be able to have these experiences with you, with the dogs, <laughs> and with nature. Um, but moving forward, because things, I don't know, life is still as crazy as ever. Um, but it seems like more people around the world are able to go out and do what they're going to do. So I would like to take this opportunity to step back from the wake and stretch. Meaning that I'm not going to do it every single day. Um, I did ask a couple weeks ago uh, if people preferred these live streams compared to a pre-recorded. And most people prefer the pre-recorded. So I get a little over... Uh, consumed with doing this and all the prep work that it takes to get everything up. So I will do the wake and stretch about three times a week, probably Monday, Wednesday, Friday in July. Same time, same place, same dogs, same craziness, um, just so that we can still connect. But I'll use that other those other days to focus on the pre-recorded videos. Yeah. Um, so with that said, Please like and share. Let's do all that social media support. Um, and I will see you in a few days. Have a beautiful day. Bye.